So the subject for this uh, video is um, a watercolour painting of Bamburgh Castle, which is a lovely uh, castle stronghold in uh, Northumbria, Northumberland um, in the UK. Um, it's, the first time I saw this castle was uh, at a distance coming down the road from uh, Scotland and it's a very, very um, a very very beautiful area, a very um, beautiful castle um, up against the sea as it stands, um, an obvious stronghold. Uh, anyway, the photographs I'm going to use as a basis um, are quite simple. Um, I'm going to use a fairly simple sky. Um, I'm going to capture a bit of light in the water. Um, and the palette I'm going to use is going to be fairly restricted, so I'm going to use cobalt blue uh, in the sky and a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue as well. Ultramarine warms the sky up uh, in places, a bit more ultramarine down here, but I'm going to use less blue in the foreshore there, so I want to capture that uh, light a little bit there and give enough light to put in this um, reflection in the water. Um, Colours are going to be fairly simple apart from the blues. Uh, yellow ochre um, for the, maybe a little bit of Naples yellow as well. Um, burnt umber uh, for the dark areas. I might darken those up a little bit further with a bit, bit of violet as well. Um, and the greens are very subdued, so I might just make those up out of a blue and the yellow ochre uh, rather than using a tube green, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, so. I'm going to tackle the sky and a bit of the water to start off with. And I want to give myself plenty of time um, uh, for the sky to go in. And um, I want a simple sky, so I don't want any, any hard edges in it at all. So basically I'm just going to wet with uh, clean, clear water. Sky area, work roughly around the castle and the land. Sometimes it's easier to do this with the painting upside down, working up to it. So this will allow more time for my watercolor, watercolors to dry and to mingle. Um, the same with the, the water area. I'm using Langton cold pressed uh, paper. It's got a nice little tooth to it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, some cobalt blue into the sky. I want the land to be, um, or the, the area above the, um, the castle, to be quite light, so there's sort of a loom um, appearing there. So. Start off at the top. Streak that in, so we've got these lovely darker areas. And have it lighter coming towards the land. I could put yellow ochre into the sky just above the horizon there, but um, I won't because I'm going to use yellow ochre in the castle and I don't want the two to merge together too much. Um, just use a little bit of ultramarine blue into that just to warm it up. There we go. I'm not going to darken that at all with any um, burnt sienna or burnt up, I just want the pure blue. Uh, there. Move that out a little bit. With the paper so wet, you've got time to move it around a little bit. Now the, the water. I want to capture, as I say, the light closer to the land, so I'm going to make the blue in the water further away, a little bit um, lighter. So we get a richer blue. 
as we come down closer to the eye. And again, I'll use some of the ultramarine blue down here too. So you get a sort of slightly ripple, ripple effect. I think that's fine, I won't mess around with that any further. So I'll dry that off. So this is going to be quite a quick um, painting really. Uh, very simple, but yes, yeah, very, well hopefully very effective. Um, because I've got this guy now, that's really, um, I wanted a nice, as I say, a nice smooth, subtle sky. That's uh, a large part of the task done. Um, what I'm going to do now is that the land and the castle itself, I'm going to give that um, a coat of yellow ochre and but start off perhaps with a bit of uh, Naples yellow. Um, you could just go straight in with yellow ochre if you wanted to. I find that Naples yellow is, although it's quite a chalky colour, is lighter. So for capturing the light areas, it's very good. Quite a wet, wet um, mix and wash there. Um, so I'm just going to give that a base, like a base coat. I'm using a fairly small brush simply because I want to get into some of this detail work, but um, you could use quite a large brush for this with a nice fine tip. In fact, I think I'll just change to that now. The lights are going to be coming from the right hand side, so some of these areas I'm going to leave almost white on the right hand side of the building. It's fine, just take off a little bit of colour there, just the right hand side of the building. Um, and now I'm going to come in with some yellow workers. So I say you could st have started off with this straight away, working in the dark areas. The thing here is to try and make sure that when you end up, or what you end up with, um, looks nice and three dimensional. Leaving a little bit of almost white there where the light is capturing the right hand side of the castle. So just using a stickier yellow ochre at the moment. Just beginning to make it look a little bit more. Three-dimensional.
good. And whilst that is still wet, I'm going to work in a little bit of burnt umber. This is Windsor Newton burnt umber, which is a lovely, lovely uh, colour. Okay, so that's the castle coming now, uh, looking a bit more three-dimensional. Um, I'm going to mix some yellow ochre with cobalt blue. To make a green. And I'll add a little bit of burnt umber to that in places as well later on. Let me just show the effect of that. And then what I can do is use a bit of a stickier mix of the of that green I've made up from yellow ochre and cobalt blue, and then mix a little bit of burnt tumble with it too for the dark areas. Okay, to make sure that's not a that's not too much of a dirty colour, but. Uh, You can see now the three-dimensional elements of the land. Because I'm working wet into wet, um, where the castle is still wet places, um, the washers are merging a bit, which is great. Right, so that's us started. Now let that dry for a second. Now that we've got the, uh, the castle established and some of the um, ground underneath it, um, I will go back later on and do a little bit of detail work in there, but not too much because I quite like the, um, the simplicity of the tones and so forth and how the tones give shape to the various areas, just as it stands, but I will add a little bit to that. What I'm going to do now is to establish more of this foreground. Um, see on the photograph here, you've got a beach, and then, uh, well, beach with um, water and so forth, then a light beach, and then you've got the darks of the ground directly above the beach, uh, and then sand going up into some of these places. Um, so I'm going to establish that, but I'm not going to do that too dark or too uh, warm, because it'll then start to take over the, um, 
the castle itself. But then what I'll do is some of those dots that I've got in the foreground, I'll use those to do some of the detail work in the castle. Uh, but as I say, not too much. Um, so I'm going to start off with a bit of burnt umber. I'm only going to roughly follow the, uh, the photograph. Um, no one's really going to know too much about how accurate it actually is. So I'm just that's quite quite wet. So then we'll go for the bottom there a little bit. What I'm going to do is just drag with a sort of a, a hungry brush. So that's a, that's a, a damp but um, otherwise clean brush. Just drag some of that up. Just to indicate crevices there. And then come back to that with more burnt umber and a little touch of cobalt blue. Just to darken that up a little bit there. So I wanted to have the same thing going all the way along. I want to vary it. And there are these beach areas that go up, little, little, little miniature coves, if you like. all the time. I'm just wanting to get the feeling of what's there but simplifying it. Um, try and brush work now, just drag those up, soften those edges. And go back in again with the burnt umber and a bit of cobalt just to Darken up just right there, down there, as it goes down to the beach. Sort of craggy area just here too, so using the side of the brush just to give myself that sort of vertical texture. And then just down here where the beach hits the water you've got a dark dark mark. So I'll do a little bit more of that in a minute, but just to show you, I'm going to um, use that same sort of colour So burnt umber and a bit of cobalt Just 
put in some darks here and there. All I'm doing is just establishing the, the three dimensional nature of what we've got here in this. Castle. And doing that with a bit of um, with a bit of contrast. So that's got the castle well established. Then go back into here, put some more darks in there as well. Get the two singing to each other, talking to each other. You can see I've put in uh, some more darks around here, darks on the castle. Um, so that's looking quite three-dimensional at the moment. Now in the original photograph um, there is a beach below this, the dark of the vertical the sort of cliff face. There's a beach down here uh, with a dark edge to it and then there's a bit of a beach spit if you like coming out here too. I could have put those in earlier or started them off with the um, um, Nichols Yellow and the uh, Yellow Ochre uh, but the beach here especially I didn't want to lose when I did the um, little vertical bits um, above it. <clears throat> um, so uh, I'm going to do that now and also put in this little, this little sort of spit of land um, at the same time. And so it's basically starting off in the same way. So I'm going to, I want it to be fairly light. So I'm just going to start off with a bit of Naples Yellow. You could just go straight in with Yellow Ochre, that's perfectly okay. Um, Goes all the way along. Warm it up a little bit with the yellow ochre towards the bottom of it. Too wet. And then <clears throat> right down on the water's edge, just darken that off. So I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber, uh, cobalt blue. I don't want a dark, dark line, but just enough to differentiate where the, where the water goes to. There you go. Blue in places. That's okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then we've got this sort of spit of sand coming out of here. This is nice because it breaks up the, um, the foreground, or the fore water, I should say. Start off with. Naples yellow, or oh, as I say, you can go straight in with the yellow worker. There's the yellow worker going in, just brightening it up a little bit. And this is <clears throat> right in the foreground, so it's going to be warmer and 
turn totally a little bit darker so just work on there it's fine bit of burnt umber move it about a bit so it's it's nicely textured Right down at the water's edge there, a bit of burnt umber and a bit of cobalt blue. Not a continuous line, just just a little bit of texture into it. Right, I'm going to let that uh, dry off, I think. So, the final thing to do is the uh, reflections. Now, there isn't too much of a reflection in the photograph of um, the beach and this little sort of vertical bit here, this sort of, um, it's not a cliff, but it's um, uh, just in front of the, thing, the uh, castle. But there's a, there is a reflection of the castle itself, and it stops and starts, there's a bit of blue going through it. Um, you can see that just there, a little bit of blue there as well, separation between the reflection and the beach. Um, and if you like, it, this type of reflection is almost like a curtain coming down, so you, you can drag the colours down. Um, there's a little bit of reflection here uh, as well from these two little mounds. Um, we can put those in. Um, so the way I'm going to do it is to wet the water area, then dry it slightly with a, a tissue because I don't want it wet wet. Um, and then take my colours, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, uh, mixtures and so forth. And put them in horizontally, and then with a dry brush, drag them both horizontally and vertically. Um, hope that it comes out all right. So, um, first thing to do is to wet the water. When I do this, I know I'm working just in a specific area here for the reflections, but I tend to wet the whole water because I don't want any hard edges. So, uh, there we go. Um, and then I'm going to take a tissue and just pat that, get some of the water off so that it is just damp. Nothing more than that. Um, and then I'll start off with um, yellow ochre. Leaving a gap between the reflection and the beach there, horizontal strokes. I'm going to leave some little areas of waves and so forth, and those waves are going to be more, um, they're going to be deeper and so forth, um, closer to the eye, further away. There may be waves, but they tend to join together as we see it. So there we go. Um, I guess this started. Leaving gaps here and there for the water to come through.
look a bit of reflection there as well. Okay. Now I'm going to get some shape into this. So I need to look at my um, my castle. I look at where the dark areas are because I'm going to use some burnt umber now. Where opposite where the the darks are. Don't be too, you know, don't get into too much detail in the reflection. You don't want the you don't want the uh, reflection to take away from the the subject itself, the castle itself. I'll go back over some of those dark areas again. So I'll make up burnt umber, <clears throat> a little bit cobalt blue. I can start to just work in some of the sort of detail areas. And immediately I can see as I'm doing this that my beach area, my spit of uh, sand or whatever coming out is disappearing so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. I'll just combine some of those shapes a little bit, there's a little bit too much white water. I don't want a big, great big brown lump, but I uh, just want to... Good, okay. Same down here. And that's the reflection getting very close to being finished. Um, there's a lot of vertical work there, so what I can do is take a dry brush just I think we also need just a little bit of reflection of the green, so that's yellow ochre and the cobalt blue. Good. OK. 
Okay. Again, let that dry. So we're almost there now. Um, I'm going to put in one or two darker marks into the, uh, the reflection. Again, burnt umber and a bit of cobalt blue. So this is for a bit of reflection. The movement, or I should say a bit of movement in the reflection, sort of ripple areas and so forth. And these horizontal marks, I'll just put some in white in a minute, just help tie the reflection together. You don't want them too uniform. Bit of detail work and reflection. It's okay. Now, I want to bring this bit of land or sand or whatever further forward. It's a little, little bit recessive at the moment. <clears throat> so, I'm just going to use a nice warm colour with plenty of red in it. I burnt umber. Of dark uh, right at the edge. So I'd use a little bit of white, so I'm going to use some designer's gouache just to. And that's just about finished, I think. So there's um, Bamber Castle complete. Um, I've put in a few cobalt dark flicks either side, a little bit further out into the water, um, just to help connect the reflection to the water itself. Um, but it's a quick painting and uses just a very small palette. Um, so, all right, I use Naples Yellow to start off with, but you could just go straight in with the Yellow Ochre, as I've mentioned on several occasions. So, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, uh, sorry, Burnt Umber, um, and uh, Cobalt Blue and the Ultramarine. So that's basically just four or five colours there uh, to, uh, to use. Um, it's all a case of getting the tonal perspective correct. <clears throat> so we want a fair amount of detail in the castle, but we don't want the castle to be too far forward 
in the picture. We want the foreground to be um, close, you know, because it's closer to the eye, we want it to, to look a little bit warmer. So darker, warmer colours for this uh, spit coming out. Let's pull that forward. And then warm colours again in the fore, or the middle, middle ground at this point here. And then subdued um, tones towards the back, giving just enough definition there to look as though the castle is uh, good and solid. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I certainly enjoyed doing it and um, if you give it a, give it a go um, then I hope you have plenty of success. Thank you for watching.